she's not your friend. And then proceeded to tell me that she had essentially brought me around this group of friends and asked him to get with me with the sole intention of hurting me. Hey, my name is Dawn. Welcome back to my podcast. And if you are watching this, then welcome to my whatever you call video on YouTube. <laughs> what is it? The live the live recording of the podcast? Who knows? But anyway, you're here, you're watching. And my hope and goal from this is to be able to share a little bit of my journey with the hopes that somebody will see it and it will help them on their journey, right? I like to think about it as leaving video and audio behind for my children so that they can watch and not fall into the same traps and mistakes that I have made. Now, granted, I believe that all of the mistakes that I have made were not necessarily mistakes, but um, tests that I had to go through in order to go to my next level. But not everybody has to go through these tests, right? There are some tests that you can opt out of taking. I remember back in New York, I grew up in New York, and I remember that at the end of the year, there were always two sets of tests. There were the standard tests that you had to take, and then there were the regents. And the regents were essentially a, a test that you would take in order, like if you passed it, you automatically passed the class, right? Well, you could opt out of that test. You didn't have to take that test. And that's what this is. This is hopefully a way that you can take the first test, but not necessarily have to take the second. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense, the illustration. But I wanted to talk a little bit today about purpose, right? And in purpose, discovering the life that you've dreamed of a lot of people when you think about or I'll, I'll talk about me when I used to think about living the life that I dreamed of I imagined that it would be you know filled with abundance and wealth and um that's essentially it and as I have gotten older that has evolved I have been on a mission to figure out what my purpose is and interestingly enough, the more I dive into the work, the more I find that my purpose, at least one of them anyway, is working with and empowering women. And um, it's interesting that this is my path because I think that, no, not I think, I have always been an encourager of women from I remember being in junior high school and encouraging a, a girl who had just gotten into the class to run for president because I just immediately saw something in her that she would be able to run for president and make an impact in this junior high school right but you know at that time like this is huge and I remember encouraging her and I remember the response from her being like beat it <laughs> and I was really, I was hurt by that because my intentions were good. My intentions were to encourage, but at the same time, not everybody is ready to receive my encouragement the way that it comes. Cause it can be, it can be a lot. I will own up to that, but I let the response from her deter me from encouraging anybody for the rest of the year. Like I, I remember making it a point to say, well, I'm never going to do that again, right? And as long ago as that was, process ingrained within me and carried on. So while I would encourage people, I wasn't encouraging people at the level that I felt compelled to encourage, right? Well... Fast forward through, you know, me growing up with guys and feeling like, oh, you know, like I don't need women around, you know, like I got like women relationships are just like of the devil and everybody's out to get me and yada, yada, yada. I don't need women relationships with women. Right. Um, and thinking about that, thinking about how I was approaching that, not only was I 
self-sabotaging any future relationships with women, like deep relationships with women. But I was operating from a place of fear based on previous relationships that I've had, friendships that I've had with women that, you know, didn't necessarily turn out the way that I envisioned them to turn out. And so as I got older and, you know, I started to develop relationships with women, I I started to see the error in my ways. Well, now I'm just at a place where I reject all of that thinking because my most valuable relationships are with women. My closest friends, like I'm talking about deep relationships where we see one another, where we can express ourselves in complete totality and not feel rejected or shunned. You just feel seen that th- those relationships have been with women. And as I think more about just life, how life has turned out, some of the things that I've had to learn, some of the challenges that I've had to overcome in terms of relationships with women. Like, I'll give an example. I grew up with guys in my building. My building was, I grew up in Brooklyn, first of all. I grew up in Brooklyn, you know, like it's it's a city, it's a big city. And I lived in a building that had 23 floors and I wanna say it was 10 or 11 apartments per floor, right? And so in this building, we there was, for my generation, there was a nice sized group of peers that I had. And so I was friends with all of the girls, you know, but the guys, they more so, there was a larger group of guys. And so just listening to them talk and being around them and, you know, playing with them. Like I remember I used to slap box and, you know, play in the monkey bars. I was a huge tomboy. And so I related a lot to my male counterparts. And um, there was one friend in particular who we used to hang out at his house and other people would come. He was kind of like... Grand Central Station, his apartment, because like his mom was never home when she was home. She was just very chill. Like we could kind of do whatever we would be in there, you know, like smoking weed and drinking. And like I was young, I was like 15 at that time. So wild to think about. But yeah. And then as as I got older, you know, we still remained cool. And I want to say around this time, I was about 18 and I was hanging out and this girl, she used to come by and I was like, oh, you know, she's cool. Like, I like her. Um, and she had trying to develop a relationship with my guy friend. And I wasn't thinking about him like that. Like the time for that had passed. Like we had our thing when we were like 14. That's like not a thing. Like whatever. At this point, he's more so like a brother to me. But apparently she didn't see it that way. She would see me kind of chilling in my sweatpants and my socks in the crib and just couldn't understand the relationship dynamic between he and I. And so unbeknownst to me, she had befriended me and then um, introduced me to a group of her friends And in hanging out with those friends, playing spades, doing more of the same, watching fights, box, I got very close with one of the guys in that group and relation um, feelings started to develop. And, you know, like we kind of started a thing. Well, after he and I had severed ties, we were still cool, but he had told me, he was like, yo, she's not your friend. Talking about the girl that I met at my guy friend's house. She's not your friend. And then proceeded to tell me that she had essentially brought me around this group of friends and asked him to get with me with the sole intention of hurting me. And when I learned that, you know, obviously I was really hurt by that because I'm thinking that this girl is my friend. I'm not seeing anything or feeling anything that would tell me otherwise. Like literally we had 
gotten a job together. We were like selling clear packaging tape, telemarketing, like just the most random job that you could have. But I like we we out like almost every day, me and this girl. And so to hear that, I was really hurt by that. And I confronted her and she was, you know, very apologetic and tearful and admitted to me that, you know, she really liked my guy friend and she saw me as a threat and she didn't understand our relationship until after she had hung out with us. And I accepted her apology and I forgave her, but I, I stopped hanging out with her, you know? And so that's just one example. There wasn't a similar situation like that. Um, and so... I don't say any of this to, you know, be like, oh, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I say all of this to say that these situations colored my perspective about relationships with women. And so I was very distrustful of women. I I would be your friend or I would be your associate, but I kept you at a distance. I didn't share a lot of my personal business with women. I did not necessarily have women over to my house unless it was somebody from that core group of friends that I grew up with in the building, right? Um, it, it took me a long time to trust women. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. When you're establishing new relationships, there obviously should be a level of caution as you're getting to know somebody. The issue with me was that I was so closed off that everybody, everyone that came into my life, I viewed them as a possible threat, as opposed to changing the perspective and looking at it as an opportunity to just get to know somebody. And when you're getting to know somebody, no, you're not sharing all of your details. You're letting the relationship develop organically. And as things develop, then they, they're learning about you, you're learning about them. Me, I was just like, kind of no, like Drake, like no new friends. Yeah, you can be around, we can have a good time, but it's not going to go much further than that. So it's interesting to discover in the self-reflection that I'm doing, the work that I'm doing, to discover that my purpose is connected to empowering women, building women, it's establishing relationships with women because my past has kind of impeded on that. <laughs> and I think that it's it's in finding your purpose. In your purpose, there will be things, scenarios, situations that will come up that will try to thwart you from moving in your purpose, right? Because let's be real, there's good and there's bad. And there are energies and spirits, whatever you believe, whatever you subscribe to, there are these things that will come and try to keep you from operating in your purpose, from operating in your path, because your purpose is to touch people, to impact people. Like your purpose is not about you. Your purpose is about changing the world. And in changing the world, it doesn't necessarily have to be on a macro level. It can be on a micro level. And anything that can come in to change that, to stop you from impacting maybe the one person that can then go out and impact the world, will like those things will just come up, right? So going back to thinking about what is that thumbs up? So going back, a thumbs up just popped on my screen. I don't know what that is. Um, let me just make sure I'm still recording. Okay. So I don't know. Oh, maybe that was just something from God telling me, yeah, you're on the right path. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's interesting that now discovering what my purpose is, it makes sense. It all makes sense. The journey from going from wanting to empower women to then being totally disgusted with women to now coming back full circle, just to give you a little bit about how and what I'm doing. I just naturally 
have in my business. So I'm a photographer. I'm a brand photographer. I didn't start out as a brand photographer, though. I started out as a wedding photographer. And um, in that, in my portfolio to include other things, I started connecting to other women to, you know, create images for their website for them, to create images for their social media for them. And I was doing these services totally pro bono because I wanted to build my portfolio. I have never been, um, I've never really wanted to work with men in that capacity. I would in the past, but it didn't make my soul sing. What made my soul sing was working with these women, telling them that they're beautiful because a lot of times women get in front of my camera and they are unsure of themselves. They are not um, feeling the best about their appearance. You know, there's always something that we're looking at that we feel like we could change, right? And so I would get a lot of that when my girls would come in front of my camera and I found myself encouraging them, boosting self, helping to boost self-esteem, telling them that they're gorgeous, just how they are, that their spirit, that their personality is amazing and that their clients deserve to see them in this light rather than, you know, some artificial thing that they are trying to put forth, right? I wanted them to know that who they were was just fine. It's more than just fine. It's life-changing it's soul-changing it's gonna touch somebody in the right way in order for them to then propel to their next level right so i found myself doing that and after i started having children weddings just became a little bit too much for me to handle it was you know weddings it's an all-day thing i'm away from my family all day not only that but editing the photos, like it was just taking up too much time. And so I decided to delve strictly into brand photography, but not just brand photography, period. It was specifically geared towards women and helping them with their brand imagery, helping them speak to their target audience in the most authentic way, but in a way that shows them as their future self, right? So authenticity within your future self. That's what I'm helping women do with their brand images. And for me, it's so much more than the imagery. Like, yes, like the photos are gorgeous. They look amazing. I love to see them on my clients' websites. But what is more meaningful for me is when at the end of the session, I can see a visible change in them from when they first came in, shy and timid and meek. And then when they leave, feel like they're just ready to take on the world. They're ready for the next step. They're ready to go out into the world and showcase their authentic self. And if I can encourage somebody to do that, to change from not wanting to fully display their light to leaving and being on fire, then that sets my soul afire. That sets my soul ablaze. So in doing that, I've met amazing women that I have fostered beautiful relationships with, I've always yearned for, but have told myself, no, you, you don't want that because you can't get that. Because the only thing that you have seen thus far is women who come into your life and don't mean you any good, right? So I had to brace what it was that was already within me in order to start walking in my purpose, in order to start attracting the relationships that I wanted on the level that I wanted. And now I'm at a place where I have identified the types of relationships that I want. Like I'm, I'm good. I'm cool with associates. Like don't get don't get wrong. I love a good associate because not everybody can be in that inner circle, right? But for my inner circle, I know what I want. I know how I treat my. I know how I want my friends to be seen, and I want the same thing for me. So. That's what I've been attracting because that's what I've been putting out. And it's so funny because I used to hear, hey, like what you put out is what you attract. And 
I like it sounds so easy, but I had to get to a point where I really understood and 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 had the aha moment because my mentality was that there's nothing more. That's what I was getting. So once I started working with these women in my brand business, and I didn't set out with it to be that way. I just was following my heart. I was following my spirit. I was following what made me sing. And I knew that working with women and creating these images for them, friends, was just something that I loved. It wasn't until after I was in it. It wasn't really until like a couple of years ago that I really started understanding, yo, this is tied to your purpose. Your purpose is working with women. Your purpose is being a feminist. Like it's so wild. I never would have imagined myself to be a feminist, but I am. And so with that being said, that's where my second baby came from, Mavens Who Link. Um, Wanting to connect women in community and encourage one another and uplift one another because that's the community that I had for myself. I wanted to expand upon that and I wanted other women to feel what it can be like to have like-minded women around you who only want the best for you, who want to see you succeed, who know that there is enough for everybody to go around, for everybody to be abundant and prosper and prosperous. And now that I know that this is my purpose and that I am walking in that and I am taking it step by step and learning and and doing more, I am finding that This is where abundance and prosperity is. Abundance and prosperity is not solely tied to money. Money is a part of it, but money is not the biggest part of it. Abundance and prosperity are directly tied to walking in your purpose. And how you get to figure out your purpose is by saying yes to the things that resonate with you. If you are thinking about something and you know, like you have a small English, just, it can just be like, it starts off really as a small voice and listening to that and then taking the steps and not being afraid of what other people are going to say, choosing yourself over what anybody else has to say, choosing your inner voice, choosing to listen to that and acknowledging your truth. That's where the journey to discovering your purpose comes in. So today, I encourage you to start listening to that inner voice. Whatever it is that you love, even if in the past somebody has discouraged you from doing it, tap back into that because nine times out of 10, that's where your purpose, not even nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, that's where your purpose is going to lie. And the, 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 the purpose is exactly that. It's a journey, right? You're going to start out slow. It's going to start out small. You may not even realize that this is part of your purpose. But as time goes on, things will start to click. Things will start to resonate. You'll start to get confirmation and you'll see exactly what your purpose is. And once you start walking in that, that's where the abundance comes in. That's where prosperity comes in. And from there, it's just an amazing journey and I'm still on it. I'll be on this journey until I'm no longer in this world. But while I'm here, I'm going to listen to what my spirit is telling me. I'm going to do the things that I feel like I should do no matter how scary it may be. Because if you don't fully understand something, yeah, you're going to be afraid. But you have to take the step and you have to listen to who you are and what your spirit is telling you. And you'll be right there with your abundance, with your prosperity and with your purpose. I hope this message was helpful. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time.